The following program is a Town of Colony television production of the William K. Sanford Town Library. Welcome to An Open Door on the Arts. My name is Barbara Richer, and I am the lucky person that gets to travel with you throughout the Capital Region while we discover the amazing artists that enrich our lives. We're not going to travel very far today. We are only traveling to Second Avenue, but that has a nice ring to it, Second Avenue. Um, this actually is 235 Second Avenue right here in Albany, and it's the home of Albany Civic Theater. Correct? Correct. We have two amazing guests that you will eventually meet. Albany Civic Theater has been around since 1955. It's been in this home, which was a little firehouse since 1965. It has done some of the most amazing community theater or theater period that's been done in the area. They've always, or almost always, been very ambitious about their shows, very professional about their shows, um, and that has not changed throughout the years, which is why it's still there and uh, has lasted so long and brought so many of us uh, great pleasure. So we're traveling over there because this is sort of another first. There's going to be an amazing musical that will open uh, February 5th there that's called Ain't Misbehavin. And it's Fats Waller's music, and it's going to be sensational, just sensational. Um, unusual in a theater this, this size to do a full-blown musical, um, but this this will be there and it will be golden. It will be beautiful. Um, I have that um, from the director and the choreographer, and I'm sure that the um, musical director would say the same. So travel with me now around the corner and let's meet Michael Meshing. Menching, yeah. Menching and Gregory Marsh. Michael is the um, director. Mm -hmm. Full blown overall. Overall director. director yeah. Okay. And Michael is the choreographer. Or Gregory. Uh, Gregory. I'm sorry, Gregory is the choreographer. Well, maybe you could start off by telling us a little bit about yourself so we know who would undertake this uh, Ain't Misbehaving. Well, uh, by day I'm a French and Spanish teacher here in Colony. Uh, and um, I have been doing community theater basically for the last 20 to 25 years. And I do high school and middle school theater as well. But um, this undertaking at Albany Civic is a first for me because um, it's Ain't Misbehaving, which is an area premiere for um, a, a community theater mm -hmm. in the Albany area. Uh, it's um, also a great undertaking um, because it is a black musical and we are staying true to form to it being a black musical. Mm -hmm. um, and um, those are rare in the Capital District as well. Uh, Albany Civic isn't known for doing musicals, mm -hmm. so this for them is a big undertaking as well. The last time they did a musical was back in 2003. Uh, so, uh, been a while then. It's been a while. <laughs> they uh, don't have the same singers and dancers anymore. No, they do no. not. Okay. No. But we have uh, an incredible cast. Um, the right people showed up at auditions. Mm -hmm. They're fantastic. Um, Barbara Howard is one of the uh, singers, and she's known locally for uh, her. How wonderful. Yes, for her um, solo work. Uh, Greg is also um, known in the Capital District as being fierce as a, <laughs> as, fierce, as a choreographer. Uh, as a choreographer. <laughs> um, it's too and bad you couldn't get him to dance I, in the Well, show, you know, he you is know? dancing in the show. Oh, you he are? He is one of the four dancers. Yes. Oh. And I might point out that he will have a solo, which I'm very excited about. <laughs> oh. Um, in one of the numbers, so. Well, we definitely to want to. As far as um, community theater and, and what I choose to direct, um, I like I like to do um, airy premieres. It's one of my things that I love to do. I like to be the first, <laughs> um, and that's just for me. 
Uh, but I also like to be the first because I like to have the first crack at the artistic um, interpretation or the artistic, mm -hmm. uh, the way I approach it, mm -hmm. um, approach the musical. And uh, I don't like having other people's ideas in my head when I do that. So you're setting the standard. I like to set this the standard. This is the standard. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I also like to push the envelope. So I've done things that are very outside my comfort level. Really? But outside your own comfort level? My own comfort level. But and have they I find you it something? exhilarating. Yeah. You've taught, have they taught you something in the beginning yeah. of it? Um, actually, the first community play, community theater play I directed was uh, two years ago. Really? After all this time of directing, and I said, I'm going to do a play. And I did a play, and it, it was successful. And I just did one last year, also at Albany Civic. I did 39 Steps, okay. which is only the second play I had directed wow. and, um, for a community theater. Uh -huh. and, uh, and that went well. And so. Uh, so you're on to something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I didn't really choose. Um, Eight Misbehaving, it kind of chose me because um, my wife Joanne is a big fan mm -hmm. of Eight Misbehaving, and she's been talking to me for 20 years about, you know, it'd be so nice if somebody would do Eight Misbehaving, and it's never done, and blah, 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 blah. And, uh, and I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was always thinking, which is a pipe dream of hers because it's not going to be done. Because it's a big show. And then Joanne Peel, my, um, my producer, also in love with the show and also in love with um, some of the amazing people that are in the cast because she's mm -hmm. worked with them before said well you know some of these people would be great we, you know wouldn't be wonderful if we could do ain't misbehave and give them a vehicle yes absolutely and uh, as far as Albany Civic is concerned um, there is a, a large black population in the community mm -hmm. that um, is quite honestly underserved by um, the arts the arts right um, and so it's a great opportunity for them to either participate or participate participate as an audience member exactly um, this particular piece in musical history is very important it's important to everyone because of the jazz experience but I think it's mm -hmm. also important for the black community to reflect on um, it's there are place history. in that part of yeah, the history. Because Fats Waller is an incredible piece of that. Yes. Uh, and what a wonderful opportunity to offer that in uh, in the, the community that Albany Civic Services. Plus, it's a reflection of the, well, it's a, a reflection of the 20s and 30s, that whole Harlem Renaissance, you know? Um, so it's it's. African Americans were hugely part of that experience, yes. and and we don't celebrate that often enough, you know. So it's uh, it is absolutely um, a, 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 an essential piece of history. It's an essential, and it's it's an integral part of jazz, mm -hmm. um, the jazz culture, and. Um, well, when you think of the Cotton Club and the yeah. Savoy and everything that was going on down there and in there and, and the big changes that, that, that the music brought about and everything, it's, um, it's incredible that uh, there aren't a whole lot more plays that reflect that. But this one certainly is one of the biggest. And before I submitted it, I talked to Greg and I talked to Brandon Jones, who is our musical director. And I said, I'm going to propose this to Albany Civic. And they and said, oh, nah. No, they jumped at it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, because I don't think I would do it without them. Yes. Um, I think it's really, really important that um, that you have a black perspective on it. Um, oh, no, absolutely. And I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't dare to try to put my own perspective. No, there's no question about um, that. I'm, I'm great at stage pictures and placement, and um, but... I really am depending on them a lot and the actors as well to mm -hmm. bring that um, true alive. Yeah, true yeah. experience alive, even though it's historical for them. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it's a part of their history that I don't want to infringe upon either. Excellent. Very excellent. Greg. Well, Gregory. I immediately Gregory. Said yes. <laughs> uh, when he asked me to do the show, um, I maybe thought about it for three seconds. <laughs> and I said yes, um, simply because initially my thought was, 
these kinds of shows don't get done around here. Mm -hmm. um, right. I've done a lot of shows locally, and it's very rare that you get one where you have a whole cast of black people. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. doesn't happen. Um, so when he asked me, I said yes. And I immediately started thinking, well, we need to get as many black people on this stage as possible. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, let's incorporate some dancers in. Because the show traditionally is done with just singers. Oh, I don't just think five I knew singers. that. It's usually oh, just five singers. Oh, I don't think I realized singers. that. Um, so I said... And the choreography is minimal in the right. original. I don't think I realized that. Okay. So then I immediately thought, well, let's get some dancers in here too. Mm -hmm. So it's created an opportunity for us to showcase amazing black singers locally, but also these young, amazing black dancers. Mm -hmm. How wonderful. And there's so much talent here yes. in, in the capital region. It's really, it's an untapped resource. Mm -hmm. You're right. So how do you, um, having spent a little bit of time on the Albany Civic stage, how do you, um, how do you get dancers and singers is it a large enough house to have I all think of those it is. things happening I think it at is. once? Um, I mean, Albany Civic is a very intimate setting. Mm -hmm. but and sometimes you want that. Oh, yes. I think you that do. for this kind of show, um, it works for us because we, we only have nine people up there. So it's not okay. like traditionally when I do shows and I have 20 people on the stage. Right, a chorus line or something. And, and, right. and you're, not putting, you're not putting a chorus on stage either. Right, right. right um, true. So it's just the nine people. And typically, um, you never really see all nine people moving at once. Mm -hmm. So there, it's it's an adequate space where you can showcase everyone and showcase them well. Has that been interesting for you as the choreographer to make that movement happen? And we haven't we haven't uh, meshed them together yet. Like the singers and mm -hmm. the dancers have not come together yet. Ah. Because they're re they're rehearsing, rehearsing separately, separately. Yeah, at this point. So once everybody comes together, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh yeah. my gosh. It'll be, I'm looking forward to it'll that. It'll be moment. wonderful. It'll be wonderful. Now, how did you get started in? How did you become a choreographer? How did you uh, end up here in Albany? Well, um, I started dancing at the age of six in Brooklyn. Wonderful. I started in ballet and then wonderful. jazz. Um, and then I said, I don't want to really do this anymore. Um, so I stopped dancing. How old dancing. were you when you said, I don't want to do this I anymore? I was about 10. Okay. Um, and then I moved to Albany shortly after. Okay. And then once I moved to Albany, I really didn't do anything. And then freshman well, year of high school. Well, in the arts, but you did well, a lot of other things. Well, no, I, I wasn't I wasn't playing <laughs> sports. I wasn't. <laughs> oh, you did I nothing. I stopped dancing. I didn't sing. I didn't do anything. Um, okay. And then a friend kind of forced me into auditioning. And then that kind of sparked things up again. And... I would say I was about 14 when that happened. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing theater in Albany since then. Interesting and great. That's it's wonderful. It's been a lot of fun. Albany has opened up a lot of great doors for me. Um, I went to Albany High School, and I mm -hmm. actually have been working at Albany High School for almost 10 years. You've been working there? Yeah, I, um, I teach dance there, and I choreograph for the theater ensemble. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So you've really found a home. Yes. A real perfect niche right here for yourself. Excellent. And have you worked with Mike before? Uh, this is what, our third? third? Fourth. This yeah. is our third show working together on a production team, but um, our fourth show together overall. Yeah. So do you do always um, mu musical work? Must Pretty not. much. <coughs> um, I mean, I've done some stuff outside of musicals here and there, but pretty much it's what I'm known for is okay. choreographing musicals. Okay. But I met him as an actor in yes. one of my shows. That was in Parade. <laughs> I was 23 years old, and I played a man who was maybe in his 60s or 70s. It was a complete transformation. Wow. Yep. But he was phenomenal. Yes. Yeah. That's amazing. He had a great director. Oh, yeah, well, that, that's always part of it. That's always part of it. But as, as a person that has done a lot of acting, you bring the talent. You bring the talent. So. But his choreography is fierce. Yeah, I imagine. Um, I actually, I don't act as much as I used to. Yeah. Um, most of what I do now is Production work gets in the way of yeah. acting. I mean, I'll, I will, nine times out of ten, I'll take a choreographing job first over an acting job. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that where your heart lies? Yes. Okay. That's good. That's I love creating. I love getting the best out of people. Mm -hmm. Now, have your folks that uh, the other three folks that dance uh, this are they um, dancers by background or anything? Um, they would probably say d that they're not, but I think of them as dancers. Okay. Um, one of them is actually one of my students at Albany High School. Mm -hmm. And one of them is one of my students <laughs> at Colony. Isn't that great yeah. to be able to introduce young people mm -hmm. to, to the theater in this way? Have they done theater before, either one of them? 
I know um, Sean has. Sean, actually, okay. we uh, we just did Legally Blonde together mm -hmm. in the fall at Slock. Okay. And, and okay. Milani has uh, also on the high school stage. Okay. That's wonderful. And Greg is actually going to back to school to be a uh, teacher. Yes, I am currently in school um, in my senior year right now. It's uh, SUNY Albany. Good for you. Thank you. Good for you. You're a man for all seasons. I guess so. <laughs> Busy everywhere. And you sound like you're inspiring and, and proud of the inspiring that you're doing and some of the folks that you're meeting. Yeah. That's great. That's so very excellent. So this sounds like a cast that's really going to have a lot of fun working together yes. on this. On this oh, they're piece. having a blast. Okay, cool. That's excellent. Yeah. That's excellent. And what's great is that um, it's nice generationally to see this kind of cast because you have... I think the youngest person in the cast is 16. Mm -hmm. um, and then the oldest is maybe what, 40s? 50s maybe? Uh, no, 50s. 50s? Yeah. 50s? Yep. Nice spread. Yeah. Nice reality spread, too. Yep. That's what was happening. You're kind of in the middle there. I'm right in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it has a nice um, timing, too, for, uh, for the area. In terms of the in terms of the the piece itself, because mm -hmm. it's Black History Month. That's right. It opens February fifth, yes. right? Opens February fifth, Black History Month. Yeah, and um, it's well, I w just the the history of the music with Fats Waller mm -hmm. um, historically is is important. But um, just in case there are a few people out there that may not know some of what that music is. Can, um, you, can you Fats Waller is um, most widely known for um, "Ain't Misbehaving," but um, did other uh, numbers like "Honeysuckle Rose" and um, "Fat and Greasy." Fat and Greasy. Feet's too big. Feet's too big. Those are the big ones. Feet's too big. Um, yeah. yeah, and some of the some of the very humorous ones like "Your Feet's Too Big" and "Fat and Greasy." Actually, um, they're kind of put into a little medley um, nice. towards the end of the show. Mm -hmm. um, and then he also wrote some pieces that were reflective on the war era. Um, with uh, the one about the um, the pantyhose, with the the women. Oh, in the first act. Yeah, in the yes. first act. There's well, like that, a, whole, that whole sequence. There's a little four sequence or five songs. of four or five songs that reflect on what women did during the war. Oh, nice. Um, so mm -hmm. um, it, it it does have a an historical. Um, so give us, the, it. give us the era too. I mean, I know we've talked about it's the, the Harlem Renaissance, but yeah. if, if people can kind of put that in an, an area. Now you're talking about maybe uh, late 30s, early 40s for the war mm -hmm. effort. Yeah. Okay. And so music. And out even of a reflection that era. On, the, on the First World War as well. Okay. So music from. Yeah. First to Second World War era. Yeah. The jazz, the 20s yeah. and, the, and the 30s. That's Waller was born in 1904, um, and. Uh, he died very early, died at the age of 39. You, you told me that last evening. I didn't Which, not realize um, that. When you think about how many songs that he um, created that were so phenomenal right. in just a short span of time, um, he uh, learned music, learned to play the piano very early, mm -hmm. but was inspired. Um, after his, his mother died, he went and lived actually with another jazz um, pianist. and. He influenced him greatly on the whole jazz experience and mm -hmm. so forth, and mm -hmm. got him really into it. And he uh, started writing, you know, very early. But what a loss if you yeah. reflect on the fact he was only thirty-nine. When thirty-nine he died. when he died. Yeah. So he died in nineteen forty-three, which is, you know, mm. right around Second mm -hmm. World War era. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, so you'll see some jitterbug. Oh yeah. Well, 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 a little bit. It's a little bit of everything. You aren't the yeah, choreographer. A of, yeah, a little bit of everything. Well, one of them is one of the numbers is jitterbug waltz. Okay. Which isn't a jitterbug. It's really it's a waltz. It's a waltz. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so, but yeah, you're going to see a lot of different. It's a lot of jazz. Movement yeah, a lot there. of jazz. Movement. It is a play that's just going to have people up out of their seats. I would think. I hope so. Yeah, it's that much excitement. I was uh, looking for uh, some um, information on "Ain't Misbehave" in the musical, uh, just just to familiarize myself with it. And I I know that you could say this better, but I'm going to say it. Okay. There was a there was a because um, I think this is wonderful. There was a quote from one of the. Um, um, 
performers? Perf no, not the performers. The people that judge the shows. Oh, the, cr the critics. The critics. The yeah. critics. Well, the critics. And uh, it, it, I think it just it just really tells you what this is going to happen there. You're just going to be so filled with life, you'll be like over the top. He said, what whistles, hoots, throws off sparks, and moves at about 180 miles an hour. Um, and it just sounds like it's just going to capture you and get you practically up off your feet as the as the music rolls along. Well, what's what's great about the show is that people will recognize the music mm -hmm. um, because they've heard it before and uh, people like that. They mm -hmm. like they like recognizing um, songs. Mm -hmm. Even if they've never seen Amos Behaving Bef Haven before, they know some of the music from outside of the show from itself. It. Um, so that will give them a comfort level and enjoyment level mm -hmm. because, and there's really no story. I mean, you're going to, s to hear the music and to see the dancing. There's, you know, there's a timeline story, mm -hmm. but um, there's, there aren't really characters in the show that you need to follow a storyline. So you're it's, just kind of moving with just the music. Moving you're with just the music. Kind of following the music. And, and what is great about our show is the fact that the singers don't have to do difficult choreography because we have dancers to, to do, do that. that for them. So the singers who are great singers can really just concentrate on singing and singing it well. And the dancers who are great dancers can Focus on the that. movement. And now, was that your idea? No, or? that was his idea, actually. <laughs> was it, Gregory? Yes. You know, that's really an excellent idea, actually. It is it is really an excellent idea. Um, because you get the best of both worlds mm -hmm. that way. And um, I think that's grand. I've not... I think it, um, it, it really helps to sum up the black experience in music. Because right. um, I think... People sometimes forget with a piece like Ain't It's Behave and you see these fabulous singers. People sometimes forget that we were dancing too. Of course, of course. That's, that's what was going on the down there. That was a huge part of the culture with mm -hmm. the Savoy and the Cotton Club. So of course. I really wanted to make it a point to inject that into the show. That this was music that had people singing but up mm -hmm. off their feet too. And, and that's what and makes our show and different from the, music. the original. So I'm that's really like, exciting. Yeah. That's an exciting difference. I had, <laughs> I had not caught that. That's really an exciting difference. And, and I don't think people are going to expect it. Um, no. Well, they might now if they watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> Cat's out of the bag. But no, that's a great idea. It's a really great idea. So that's wonderful. And you're right. You're not going to get winded if you're flying up in the mm -hmm. air for a jitterbug. You, right. You can also just be yeah, Someone so else is singing. you're going to get really good singing. <laughs> right, you can, you can get winded and not have to worry about it. That's good thinking on your part. Nice idea. And, nice and idea. one thing that's important, um, most community theaters in the area use microphones now mm -hmm. for their singers. And we are not using microphones. Because you have full, rich voices? We have full, rich voices. We have powerful voices. We are using microphones in that we need them as props because ah. it would be really, it wouldn't be historically correct to see the singers just singing on stage right. without microphones right. in front of them. Um, they'll be dummy mics. Because they, um, they don't really need to be mics. Because they don't need to be mics. It sounds like you have some fabulous voices. Yeah, we do. We have great voices. How many in your chorus? Oh, there's just five. Singing. Five singers. Oh, five singers. Five singers and four dancers. Gregory actually sings as well, but he... Gregory, he <laughs> does a little bit of everything. We, we might toss him in a number, maybe. He I don't know. He does a little bit of everything, Gregory. That's good for you. That's how you stay in the theater, you know, long after you age Well, out. you know, you always have to be a triple threat. <laughs> I know. So, so that's great. So you had to find five really solid singers. Singers, yep. Men, women? Two men, three women. Dancers? Two men, two women. Good, good, good. Um, so we talked about the dance and we've talked about um, the singing. Where does the music come from? Do you have, is it any live music there? It's or is live it all music. pipe music? We or? will have uh, one uh, acoustic piano. We will have a bass and we will have um, drums. Great. And Great. that will be off stage. Piano, bass, and drums. Yep. Off stage. It'll. It's in the next room. Mm -hmm. But it was important to us that we keep it black performers on stage. Yes. And so, um, the the quote unquote band slash orchestra will be off stage. 
does it get like mic'd in? But it's big music, right? Uh, we won't know until um, until you all production get Sunday. Yeah, okay. whether we need to mic them or not. Probably not because it's pretty close. The acoustics are great. The yeah, acoustics are yeah, great. They yeah. are. It's a nice tight little. Yeah, theater. and you know, a lot of times um, in shows, the orchestra overpowers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now it's in a different room. So. Mm -hmm. We're only going to make it if necessary, and then control the the volume. So that's nice. You're going to have some big voices so, in that room so too. So, thankfully, we have a wall kind of, you know, muffling the mm -hmm. the um, the volume of okay. the orchestra okay. if we need to. So wonderful! It sounds like you've really thought ahead of all of the things to tweak that will make it stronger. Things that will make it work in the production area that you have. Um, very professional and very, very interesting. Sounds like it's going to be wonderful. Um, from the original play, I also read that uh, the original cast all were nominated for Tonys. Yep. I mean, this play was really well received, if you want to say anything about that. <laughs> it, uh, it did really well. It was a, a vehicle for Nell Carter. It made her Mm -hmm. you know, a household name. Mm -hmm. And she was incredible in it, and what a loss. Oh, we know her voice. Yeah. You know, we know her voice and her um, spirit just moved. And Charlene moved Woodard is actually um, from Albany, one of the cast members of the original. And tell and remind our listening, uh, listening and looking audience who Charlene Woodard is, because they may not realize it. Well, uh, Charlene... Um, You've seen her in everything. Yeah, you've seen her in everything. <laughs> um, what I love to watch her in is um, <laughs> Law and Order SVU. She Sister plays Peg. Sister Peg, and I love Sister Peg. I love that character. Yes. Um, what would you like to see this mean to the um, community, uh, not just around Albany Civic Theater? It's important for the black community because it's part of their musical history. Exactly. And, and it's part of everyone's musical history. Exactly. But they, they have... Uh, I don't know. Uh, they should have a special connection with this. Well, I yeah, think. I think through the music too. Well, I mean, I've heard some such outstanding um, choirs in this area that that would just drop dead enjoy this music, mm -hmm. and they should be there. You know, they sh they should right. be there for that. But so. I think it's important for everybody in the area to realize that this show is never, never done around here. It might be the only time in your lifetime, if you live here, that you'll see it done. Um, I think maybe Cap Rep did it, I don't know, over 10 years ago. I think they I were the know. only one that, since I've lived here, mm -hmm. and I've lived here a, a long time, that I've seen attempt it. Um, it's the time to go. Yeah, it definitely um, is. Nobody's going to do it, it again, probably. And it, it's a great opportunity because it's in your neighborhood, and we've already sold out a performance. Wow, well, great! Yeah, <laughs> so That's I think good. tickets are haven't going even to, opened yet. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think tickets are going to go well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping they. I, I'm hoping we sell out the whole time, um, but you know, I wouldn't wait to get out there. The ticket. And I think get out there and, you and should call. make the call because. Unless you go outside of the Albany area to see it, you know. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Um, I thank you guys so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. You for saying, okay, why not do Eight Misbehaving? That was good. <laughs> that was really good. Because it's not the easiest show in the world to put together or to do. So that, you know, A+. Plus. And you are becoming a teacher, and you started out as a dancer, and now you're going to dance and teach, and you're doing everything with this play. That's amazing. So uh, may all your students learn many wonderful things Thank from you. you. And, uh, and may all of us definitely be at Albany Civic sometime during this run to watch Gregory Marsh dance his way to fame uh, and, and Michael Menching mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to applaud his, um, his, his daring to just go out and do what's wonderful theater just because. Thank you for being with us.